The tsunami saw the Tamil diaspora flock to Sri Lanka. My cousin was one of them. He had managed to raise over a hundred thousand dollars in a single week and had returned to find out what else could be done. But first, he was on a chocolate mission for some neighborhood kids from America. His old school friend Raviraj was there to help. That was when I first met Raviraj. I liked him immediately, especially his energy and his way with people. He spoke Tamil, English and Singhala and was able to bridge the ethnic divides. All kinds of people came to speak to him. I travelled often with Ravi Raj around the island. I always look forward to our trips to Jaffna up the A9 road. During these journeys, Ravi Raj would entertain me with stories from his past. My favourite one is how we first entered politics. When Ravi Raj was about to go to Jaffna to run for deputy mayor, his mother refused to let him leave the house. Her anxiety was understandable. The previous two mayors had both been assassinated, allegedly by the Tamil Tigers. Ravaraj's mother, knowing that her son strictly observed Hindu customs and practices, positioned herself in front of the doorway, her legs blocking his path. It is forbidden to cross over someone else's legs, especially when they're your mother's. Ravaraj was in a dilemma. For hours he agonized, but in the end crossed over to take the first steps of his political career. Raviraj felt that the tsunami, although a terrible disaster, was an opportunity for people to forget their differences and come together as one. You, you, know, you know, I am always an optimistic personality. I will never think about something coming to a standstill. I always, I, I always see as a positive thing that I want to continue with this and I feel this peace talk should continue. That would be the outcome of this and we all will get together and solve our basic problem. Thereby, we can have a, we can have a United Sri Lanka forever. Okay, yeah. During the months that followed, I saw less of Ravi Raj. He felt it was no longer safe for me to travel with him. He shunned security and people said he was taking too many risks with his outspokenness. Ravaraj spoke out against everyone. He was particularly critical of the government's decision to close the A9 road, the only land link to the north of the country. Shortly after this interview, Raviraj and his bodyguard Lucky were shot dead in Colombo. His mother's worst fears had come true. I was shocked when I heard the news. The previous evening he had been protesting outside the UN head office against the killing of 47 refugees in Vaharai by government troops. He has been a great human rights worker, a peace worker, a person who has stood for a negotiated solution and who has been very close to the Sinhalese. I was with thousands of others who were at the tribute rally before his body was taken to his hometown of Jaffna. Everyone had come to pay their respect to the man and what he stood for. I remember thinking how sad it was for Sri Lanka to lose someone like Raviraj, who had unusually reached out to all Sri Lankans, the Muslims, Tamils and Sinhalese. We want to demonstrate our protest and to ensure that this 
does not happen in the future. The assassinations and the culture of impunity continue in Sri Lanka. The number of moderate voices that have been silenced since Ravaraj's murder back in November 2006 is shocking. It's easy to forget people like Raviraj and his efforts to transform this senseless conflict, for his death to become just another statistic. But I continue to remember him today. Maybe his voice is no, no longer heard, but that is heard loudly, even in his death. That's what I can say.